This is Double Seven Debris Things. I'm Intelligence Officer Wiz. And I'm Weapon Specialist Zero. Zero, how you doing this week? Bit of a mind-numbing week so far. Aren't not they? really my type of week. <laughs> Aren't they all mind-numbing at a certain point? Uh, not really, not just really. this one's extra mind-numbing. <laughs> uh, I see, I see how it is. Alright, so we're here to comb the files of MI6 to talk about the cinematic adventures of one James Bond. This week, License to Kill. Zero, I, I gotta say, for some reason I've been getting a lot of things on social media about Bond movies. Maybe it's all the posts about Bond movies I'm doing. I don't know. That, that might be the case. Not only have I been seeing posts on Bond movies, we've also been getting comments on our episodes when we do the Bond movies that there's actually a lot of people who are fans of Timothy Dalton as Bond. Did you know about this? Because, uh, again, uh, I'm going through all the Bond films for the first time, and I kind of thought that Dalton was considered kind of a eh, kind of Bond, but it sounds like there's people who are big fans of him. Yeah, he's always been sort of the dark horse Bond, which isn't a bad thing. It's not a mark against him. No. I think the reason he's a bit of a dark horse is because after sort of the silly slapstickishness that we saw with Roger Moore, Dalton was sort of like a fresh breath of air. It was like, oh my god, he's he's kind of back to brass tacks sort of thing. This is fantastic. And, of course, because Dalton unfortunately got cut short from portraying any further portrayals of Bond, I think he's still quite beloved because of how good his portrayals have been. Yeah, I, I definitely have noticed that with some people, the fact that he's done very little of them, he's only done two, that people give him a much a longer leash when it comes to maybe the issues that some of his films had. But we watched uh, The Living Daylights, and that wasn't that bad. And, well, we'll get into License to Kill. But, um, yeah, I was just was pleasantly surprised how a, a lot of posts I've seen was, oh, what's your favorite Bond? And I'm seeing a lot of Daltons. And I'm like, wow, I would have never thought that. All right, so let us get into our mission objectives, where we go through certain elements of the James Bond films and discuss them piece by piece. And let's start with 007, which is... James Bond, played by Timothy Dalton. This one is interesting. He's actually got a little bit more emotion, especially with kind of the events of the, in the beginning of the movie. It was kind of disarming in a way because I was just like, all right, Timothy Dalton, back as kind of a cold, calculating sort of Bond. I kind of know what to expect. It's been a while since I've seen this one, so I could be dead wrong. And then, of course, kind of the tragedy that happens in the beginning of the movie, I was like, oh, shit. He's actually got a little bit of emotion in him this time. Oh, shit. Yeah, that was the thing that startled me at first, too, was like, wow, this is an emotional Bond, which I don't think there really has been any Bond that's been that emotional. I, you might say that at the end of On Her Majesty's Secret Service, that would be Lazenby, and in the beginning with Connery and Diamonds Are Forever, there was a little bit of that, but that was very little on both ends. But to see a Bond who is clearly overly emotional throughout the entire film was a pretty big breath of fresh air to this one because it actually gives him more character in this movie yeah i felt so too it felt a little bit more humanized and again it's it's definitely not a bad thing because just they don't overplay it too much he's emotional when it comes to some of the emotional stuff he gets serious and and just right to it when he needs to get serious and it's kind of a unique balance that they don't quite overdo kind of like with uh, what we saw towards the latter part with the Roger Moore movies where they would kind of play up the womanizing, play up the goofy one-liners and the slapstick and things like that. Yeah, I, I would agree with you there as well. I do like the fact that Bond has got a singular focus in the movie. Like, there's not a lot of wordplay, there's not a lot of jokes, there's not a lot of uh, flirtation involved with any of the characters in the movie. He is just singularly focused on the mission and trying to avenge Felix and his wife. Because that is so focused, I think it's probably the best Bond interpretation that I have seen thus far. It's actually really good. It was really enjoyable to watch. It was refreshing, and it gave Bond more character. And then you get emotionally invested at the end of the film, too, when what happens happens, uh, which is not something I have felt in the other Bond films. Bond has always felt like, oh, he's going to win. But even though in the back of my mind, I was like, he's going to win this, too. I was like, oh, my God, how are they going to do this? And I was invested for the first time in a long time with these Bond films. I really like Dalton in this. He's just fantastic in this one. The emotional addition just added a little bit more color into his character, and I think it's just better as a whole for it. Yeah, 
I definitely agree with you. All right, so let's get into the villain, which is Franz Sanchez, played by Robert Davies. He's kind of the first in a, a trend of just sort of violent villains and everything, especially just in the beginning, just what he does to Felix. Ah, oh, it's pretty gruesome for a Bond movie. <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, like some of the other people, he just kind of knocks off. He's equally as violent as well, too. So just it's kind of a continuing trend of just we need to really overcorrect for the Roger Moore era of things too because towards the end of the Roger Moore stuff it was just kind of hey let's let's keep on going with these Saturday morning cartoon mad scientist sort of like super villainy villains and things like that as far as things go I think his bit on just where trust is like the most important value to him is kind of interesting because it sort of plays into the South American drug lord machismo on honor sort of themes that you've got going there I looked at Sanchez as someone who is ruthless as, as Max Zorn and Blofeld but with zero of the cheek this guy is brutal this guy is dangerous and he's really the only villain that i have watched from bond maybe with the exception of red grant or goldfinger where he actually feels like a threat he feels like someone who's dangerous and that bond has to be careful with whereas the others uh, we've talked about uh, with other movies as well they're just kind of cookie cutter mad scientist megalomaniac kind of villain this does not feel like that another thing that this film does very well is that it sets up characters that make this guy dangerous the murder of felix's wife and nearly killing felix and the way he treats his girlfriend all points to him being utterly ruthless and careless is just a character that you want to fucking hate and that is perfect for this villain he's heartless he is he's got charisma and smarm and he's entertaining and it's satisfying when he's finally put down he might be the best villain so far for me like i think he's even better than goldfinger I think he's excellent. I would say he's definitely one step above Goldfinger. I think you put it best. They set him up so early in the movie that he's just a really, really, really fucked up person. And you're just like, God, he is just fucking scum. Abusing his girlfriend too. All these little things just incrementally just say, yeah, Sanchez is a bad fucking dude. And you're just like, God, I fucking hate that guy. And then by the end... It just feels so satisfying when just Bond gets his revenge. You're like, oh, my God, it's over. <laughs> yeah. And the thing that also that this villain has, that I think villains like Blofeld don't have, is that he actually seems smart, actually seems cunning. Whereas like Blofeld and probably some of the other ones that are supposed to be smart just really do dumb things because they're over the top. He's not so over the top in this movie. I mean, some might debate he is. But I think he's the most believable and probably the most entertaining and satisfying of all the villains for me. All right, so let's get into Bond girls. There are two Bond girls in this film. Let's start with Pam Bouvier, who is played by Carrie Lowell. Personally, I kind of like Pam. She's kind of tomboyish, and I must confess I am a big fan of tomboys. Oh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so for her, I was just like, my gosh, she's kind of cute. She's a bit clever too, but kind of neat because she's also a very, very capable Bond girl. Yeah, I think that's one of the big things I like about her is that when you meet her and when she finally gets hooked up with Bond, she is an equal to him. She can do what he does and she's very capable of doing the things that she needs to do. She's not a damsel in distress, which we'll get into with the next Bond girl. I think the one thing I do not like is the crush that she develops on Bond. And there's really no reason for it it's just like oh well she's the bond girl so wants to get down with him right and it kind of feels like a schoolgirl crush and it really makes it very weird towards the end where she's like i hate bond with what he's done i'm like bitch you're an agent what are you fucking talking about that's what they do what are you talking about it, it makes her character a little less maybe not believable but a, a, a little less entertaining because at that point i'm like Ugh. like there is no need for that like, this is the one bond girl where i would have been like probably would have best if she didn't sleep with him but oh well we know what happened that's the weakest thing i, I have with her but that's it other than, other than that i like her definitely agree the end where you see bond kind of like just saying his goodbyes to the other bond girl and she kind of gets like this like high school jealousy bit of oh god why 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 her damn it why yeah and then just on goes all right well see ya and then just drops into the pool and and then just kind of like goes to her it's just like this kind of cheapened everything uh yeah. <laughs> and on top of that you're bond dude you had the perfect chance for a three-way and you messed it up <laughs> like seriously like i would be like oh i got these two really attractive women who are into me 
you think you couldn't worm that way in? Come on. <laughs> was there a Bond that had a three-way? I mean, okay, hold on. Is there a Bond that actually asked for a blowjob at one point? Like, how do you do that as Bond? Like, is, is there too much sexual innu- innu- innuendo to ask for a blowjob while you're Bond? Like, how does that work? Why won't they say these things in these movies? These are important. <laughs> we should know. I think all that's uh, always buried in the innuendos of like some of the Bond girls who have like very, 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 very double entendre sort of names like Doctor Goodhead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ah, so you're a velvety white throat, huh? Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> that's a little on the nose. <laughs> So let's get into the other Bond girl, which is Lupe Lamora, played by Talisa Soto. She definitely gets set up in the beginning as the damsel in distress, especially when you see Sanchez literally abusing the shit out of her right within the first 10, 15 minutes of the movie. The entire movie, every time she encounters Bond, she's like, oh God, get out of here, get out of here. What the fuck are you doing? Get out. I'm in danger, you're in danger, get out of here. That's just the archetype that she's just been cast in, just the damsel in distress. Yeah. And that's how it just is for her for most of the movie. She's three things. Damsel in distress. She is the thing that makes you hate Sanchez even more. And eye candy. That's all she is in this movie. And which is kind of sad because there could have been a little more interesting things with her in this movie. But that's all you got with her. She's fine. Again, she's gorgeous in my opinion. (laughs) I I think she's... uh, But other than that, like not an interesting character. And the performance is fine. All right, so let's get into spy action. This one had some pretty good action sequences. You kick off in the beginning with just daring, daring capture sequence where Bond just kind of like is tethered to a helicopter and then he's tying the rudder of the plane to this guy wire and then just the helicopter just kind of absconds with this airplane. The action's just fantastic in some sequences. The stunt work stuff gets pretty intense towards the latter half of the movie when they go to Sanchez's base and everything. You've got explosions everywhere, you've got like, stunt driving and just gun battles and things like that. It it gets pretty wild and everything. Or this is one of the movies that you're definitely seeing much more stunt work and uh, practical effects. There is some projection related sequences for like the driving sequences, but they aren't too bad. They're a little bit noticeable, but they're not egregious. No, not at all. Not at all. I, I think, like we mentioned in The Living Daylights, we're seeing an upward trajectory when it comes to the quality of the action and the stunts. They're more believable, they seem to be more intense, and they are much more elaborate in this as well. I really liked the action stunts in this movie. They were really entertaining. I even liked the underwater action sequences, which I've never liked in these movies. <laughs> but yeah, but they're good. Yeah. And what is also interesting about this is how bloody the movie gets. There was a couple of scenes where, so like I, I forget who kicks or hits a driver and it bloodies their face up right away. You have the one scene where the, the one guy in Sanchez's group gets exploded on and you see blood popping. Like, uh, this movie's a little bit interesting because uh, it does go a little bit on the bloody side for some of the uh, sequences. Like when you have Dario just at the drug base just trying to kick Bond down into the grinder and everything. And then, of course, just things don't quite go the way that he thinks they're going. And Bond en- ends up dragging him down into the grinder. And you're just like, it just gets pretty bloody. I'm just like, all right, right. Yeah. Yeah, this is where um, you had like some of the action sequences get a little bloody because I think you also had some of that in the Brosnan movies as well, too. Really? I don't remember that. Well, we're going to go through those, so... (laughs) I don't don't remember it being that bloody. That's interesting. What I also think is really good are the espionage elements in this movie. And I think they're particularly good not only because they're staged very well, but because Bond doesn't have a safety net in this, technically. He is doing this rogue, so this makes it a lot more interesting. And I also want to say, too, I really like that Q was supporting him in this movie. I don't know why, but I really like the fact that Q was like part of this ragtag team towards the end of the film. Oh yeah, it was funny, especially because Bond makes reference that, you know, Q's a fantastic field agent. I was like, field agent, what? And then of course you've got that scene towards the end where you see this old man sweeping, sweeping the driveway and everything. (laughs) And then all of a sudden when the trucks pass by, the old man turns the room bristle side up and then an antenna pops out. And I'm just like, what the, holy shit, that's Q. Oh my God, he is a field agent. (laughs) Yeah. I thought that was funny as hell. I think all the action elements are really good in this movie. I think they are entertaining, they're exciting, and it drives the plot forward into an interesting end. I think there is one thing missing, though. 
and I think you will agree with me on this. I think there should be more sound effects during the end sequence with the 18-wheeler popping up on its side. There should have been some yakety sacks, maybe some, uh, some uh, like, trumpets or something like that. I know you're into that stuff, so I, I think yeah. that's what was missing in this. Well, to be fair, um, there was some sound silliness in the truck chase scenes, like, at one point when you've got Sanchez shooting at Bond trying to crawl around on the 18-wheelers, the bullets pinging against the truck actually play the Bond theme. And Are you everything. serious? I was like, <laughs> yeah, dead serious. I was just like, hold, hold the phone! And I had to rewind the scene a few times. I was just like, motherfucker. <laughs> I totally missed that. <laughs> I gotta watch that again then. So there is there is some sound silliness, but it's nowhere near egregious. That's like goddamn slide whistle. You would love the slide whistle. Get over <laughs> it. Come on. <laughs> you're turning into me. You're you go you're gonna find reasons to hate something and then you start realizing slowly I actually love it. You're gonna get slide whistles in the brain, and you're gonna be like, ah, oh, you know what's missing? Slide whistles. Yeah. <laughs> So let's get to the theme song opening credits, which is License to Kill, written by Narada Michael Walden, Jeffrey Cohen, and Walter Ifanasi, performed by Gladys Knight. This one wasn't too bad. Gladys Knight's performance is very soulful, as always. I thought it was all right. You know, I think it's okay. It's one of those songs, again, where it's a ballad song and it doesn't really quite fit with the rest of the film. Unless it's about the unrequited love between Felix and James, and I completely missed it. Maybe that's what it is. Nah. <laughs> nah. nah. Eh. Oh, well. Well, then, I don't see how it fits. On top of that, I don't even think it's the best song in the film. I think it's the end song, which is If You Ask Me To by Patti LaBelle. I thought that's a much better song. And it fit with the scene it was in. I think the song is okay, but in probably a rare circumstance, it's not even the best song in the film, which usually the theme song is in every Bond film. And then with the opening credits, they're fine. I mean, I had the same feeling I had with Living Daylights. It's just a reuse of tropes from other Bond films. It seemed like an homage to stuff like Goldfinger and uh, maybe The Living Daylights. But yeah, I mean, the opening sequence, it was fine. I mean, yeah. it wasn't terrible. It was just fine. Yeah, it was it was perfectly serviceable, as I would say. All right, Zero, conclusion time. Mission accomplished. Timothy Dalton provides a fantastic performance. The addition of an emotional range to Bond in his performance, I think, just makes for a fantastic portrayal of Bond just overall. You've got much more fantastic action sequences and the stunt work's fantastic. Overall, the sort of buildup on the villain just making him just much and much and much more nefarious as the movie goes on and then just when he gets his comeuppance it just feels like a pressure valve being released and just you're satisfied with bond getting his revenge it, oh it's just nothing but exquisite it's a real damn shame too because as mentioned in last week's episode just due to contract complications timothy dalton his time expired as bond and he did not choose to renegotiate he just walked from the role and that's the end of that it's a real shame that we don't get to see him in further iterations but what a spectacular performance from him and just this movie is just a blast to watch overall mission accomplished for me too uh, this is a legitimately great bond movie i think this was a really good movie the main elements work really well bond is a revenge seeking missile sanchez is one of the most ruthless villains he's faced really good action spy sequences the only issue that i have the only issue is the bond girl and how she falls for him and that is it but it's so minor that it's not really even that big of a deal to me this is a top five bond film I really enjoyed this. It was exciting, had great action, and had one of the best villains in the series. It's just great. I love this film. It was really good. I'm not sure if it's my favorite overall Bond film, but it's up there. It's definitely a top five for me. So, Zero, mission accomplished? Oh, yeah, mission accomplished. Mission accomplished for License to Kill. Now, if you want my full review on this movie... You can go to my website at, at IamTheWiz.com. You'll have my full written review right on the site, along with a link to the video that has this review that you've just listened to. Thank you for listening to this review. If you want to know what we're reviewing in the next couple days, you can look on the screen right now to see what's coming up next. If you like what you heard, go ahead and leave a like on this video. 
If you want to discuss your opinion on the film or the review itself, please leave a comment. And if you want to hear more, subscribe to the channel. Thank you again for listening. I will talk to you next time.